what's going on on my YouTube buddies. I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And continuing on in my series of Billy Wilder reviews, in today's video I'll be taking a look at Billy Wilder's second to last film in his career from 1978, a movie called Fedora. An ambitious Hollywood hustler becomes involved with a reclusive female star named Fedora, whom he tries to lure out of retirement. Fedora was released in 1978, and like I said, this was the second to last film that Billy Wilder directed in his pretty extended career. This movie came out to mix to negative reviews. A lot of people negatively compared this to Sunset Boulevard and said this was just a second-rate version of it. And the film flopped when it came out. It was one that pretty much kind of signaled the end of Billy Wilder's career because his later movies just weren't as consistent or strong as some of the films that he had made during his prime. And people were starting to see the cracks in Billy Wilder's filmography and they pretty much brushed this one off too and the film was forgotten about. I have seen some people reassess this film over the years and say the film is pretty underrated but when you see a lot of Billy Wilder rankings online Fedora seems to be near the bottom of the list for many many people. I was intrigued to check this movie out because of some of the reception I had been hearing on this movie. This is my first time watch on Fedora of course and I gotta be honest, I really like this film. I think it's one of the directors, not only is it one of his more underrated films, but I dare say it might be the most disturbing of all Billy Wilder's films, some of the things that are explored in this movie. Now, it's no secret that this is very similar to Sunset Boulevard in a lot of ways. And yes, I love Sunset Boulevard. It is to date my favorite out of all Billy Wilder's films. And to me, it, fa it fascinates me that Billy Wilder decided, you know, later on in his career, just uh, made another movie that's not like a remake of Sunset Boulevard per se, but telling a story that shares the DNA of Sunset Boulevard and tackle similar themes with different characters and doing a different spin on what he had already done with Sunset Boulevard two decades prior. And I thought I find it really fascinating that not only did Billy Wilder want to direct this, but he does reteam with William Holden, who previously starred in Sunset Boulevard, to star in this movie as well, dealing with another Hollywood has been, in this case the Fedora character. And I'm not gonna say Fedora is a ripoff of Sunset Boulevard, especially when you got Billy Wilder directing both of these movies. And I think both Sunset Boulevard and Fedora are able to stand out on their own. There's plenty of similarities and differences between the two. I would say in Fedora's case, Fedora m mostly focuses on the Fedora character and her quest to stay young, despite the fact that she's aging and she's getting older. She wants to have that eternal youth within her. She wants to uh, stay and look young and be the attractive actress that people fell in love with since the beginning. And, you know, you see people in showbiz even today that want to still look youthful despite growing in age. Instead of aging gracefully, they want to try to stay and look and feel young as much as possible because they're scared of aging. And I guess this is, feels like a cautionary tale in a lot of ways because her attempts to stay and look and feel young, even in her 60s and 70s, does have dangerous consequences and we see that throughout the course of the story. I'm not diving too deep into the story because there are some pretty sick and twisted twists and turns along the way, some of which did genuinely shock and disturb me. There's stuff set up at the beginning where you don't know who to trust in this situation because clearly the Fedora character wants to continue acting but there's other people that are in this uh, mansion that she's in, this reclusive mansion on an island somewhere, and you know they they're like, uh, she's a little crazy. She needs to stay in this on this island because she can't handle the fame anymore. 
But we see that some of these other characters are a little twisted as well, and they're a little harsh and abusive toward the Fedora character in the first half of the movie. So throughout the whole movie, we're like William Holden's character. We're not sure who to trust throughout this whole thing. There's like a mystery that builds within what's actually going on. I will say, and I've seen people criticize this too, they actually reveal the twist halfway into the movie on what's actually going on. And the second half explains everything that's happened. And I've seen some people say that was a big mistake because the second half is not as interesting in comparison. Having a whole second hour of the movie explain the twist just comes off as boring and lackluster. And I can see where they're coming from. I am in the camp that much preferred the first half when there was a mystery. And maybe they should have revealed the twist at the very end. I think it would have been more of a shock. However, in true classic Hollywood fashion, you know, Billy Wilder had done these new war type films that involve a lot of narration and flashbacks and other techniques. We saw that in films like Double Indemnity and Sunset Boulevard. To me, this just felt like Billy Wilder hearkening back to Golden Age Hollywood and some of those classic techniques. And so I was still invested in the overall story, even with characters explaining what was actually going on and it is a disturbing story to see unfold uh, the lengths Fedora was able to uh, do to stay young. Uh, it was a pretty disturbing story and a pretty interesting cautionary tale. I think the performances are all excellent. Uh, the actress who plays Fedora I thought was really good but there's another character called the Countess who is pretty much controlling Fedora's life while she's on this island, who I thought was absolutely sinister throughout. I really was uncomfortable whenever I saw that character and uh, her trying to control Fedora's life, which I thought was pretty disturbing to watch, honestly, and a little bit sad, too. There's some sad, tragic undercurrents throughout the course of the story that really made the film a little bit uncomfortable to watch, but... It made the story all the more interesting. Of course, William Holden, he's still fantastic as ever, playing this time playing a Hollywood producer, trying to get Fedora out of retirement. It was awesome seeing him in another Billy Wilder film after so many years after teaming with the director for films like Stalag 17 and, of course, Sunset Boulevard. And he's awesome once again in this movie. If I had to criticize aspects of this movie, like I said, the second half is not as investing as the first. The second half was still good. It was still well acted. There were some good twists and turns along the way, but it just didn't have the same spunk that the first half of the movie has. There's also elements of the film that come off as unintentionally goofy. I don't know if it was because of some of the limitations of the filmmaking at the time, but there's a death scene that happens in like the opening scene that was one of the goofiest death scenes I think I've ever seen. I think they were trying to make it a shock, but it just came off as unintentionally goofy that it made me laugh so hard watching it when I was checking this movie out for the first time. There's also a really bad dub of a character in this movie, we find out about a daughter that a certain character has. And the dubbing, not only was it so noticeable, but it was so bad of a dubbing that it just took me out of the movie in that scene. So there are some technical stuff in this movie that I'm surprised ended up in a Billy Wilder film. Usually Billy Wilder's usually better than this. as He's made some really great technical achievements throughout the course of his career. And the fact that they stand out in a 1978 movie was... Kind of shocking to me, honestly. But you know what? Fedora is still a really good movie. I would say this is one of Billy Wilder's more underrated movies. I did highly enjoy this one. It's got a really interesting mystery. And yeah, it does tread similar grounds of Sunset Boulevard. And Sunset Boulevard is still the better movie. But Fedora is still a good movie in its own right. I think people tend to discredit this one because of the similarities between the two. But I think because it's diving into an actress wanting to stay young, I think it's able to stand on its own two legs. And I think this movie is still really, really good. Even though it's not near as strong as Sunset Boulevard, there's still enough that Billy Wilder brought into this movie that I'm, I'm willing to give this a strong recommendation. Definitely give Fedora some love. I think it's a really good movie that's 
Definitely deserves your time. It's very well made, some great twists and turns, beautiful cinematography and locations. The performances are really good. I thought Fedora was a strong hidden gem in Billy Wilder's filmography, and I think it deserves more of your attention. This is one of the better later films in Billy Wilder's filmography. I think of all the movies he's made post the apartment. I would say this and one, two, three are probably his two best films, but that's just my personal opinion. This was a strong later entry in Billy Wilder's filmography, and at the end of the day, I'll be giving Fedora a four out of five stars, and on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 77 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Fedora as part of my Billy Wilder director project, where I'm going through his complete filmography from his directing debut to his last film. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're a fan of Billy Wilder, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can check out my Billy Wilder director playlist, where you can check out all the previous Billy Wilder reviews I've covered on the channel at this point from his first film, Bad Seed, all the way to his second to last film, Fedora. All the movies he's made in between, Double Indemnity, Sunset Boulevard, the Apartment, Witness for the Prosecution, Some Like It Hot, you name it. My reviews for those movies are all there. And feel free to check out my other Billy Wilder reviews through the playlist. I'm down to my last Billy Wilder review, so join me in my next Billy Wilder video where I'll be reviewing the final film Billy Wilder directed in his career, his 1981 film Buddy Buddy, which starred Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau. We'll see how that one goes. I haven't heard the best things about it, but I actually did like Fedora, so I'm willing to give Buddy Buddy an open mind. So be on the lookout for my review of Buddy Buddy, Billy Wilder's last film coming to the channel real soon. But if you've seen Fedora, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!